What's going on guys? My name is Kevin Griffith and this is the Holler Barbecue. So today I got another unboxing for you. I was out camping last week and I've been missing my Blackstone griddle. So I went and picked up one of the 17 inch little tabletop griddles to take along with me camping. So today I'm gonna be unboxing that for you. We're gonna assemble it, we're going to season it, and then we're gonna see how long one of these things actually burns for. So sit right there and let's get to going. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Hey, first let me apologize for not getting a video out to you guys for the last couple of weeks. I had a few things going on. I had my daughter's birthday party, um, basically a whole weekend of doing stuff, so didn't have time to do that. And the following week, we went camping. Um, so didn't really have a time to do anything then either. Um, but during camping, I did realize one thing, I missed my Blackstone griddle. So I went and picked up this 17 inch tabletop griddle. Today we're going to open that up, take a look at it. So let me bring you in closer so we can take a look. All right, this is Blackstone's um, smallest unit, 17 inch. It runs off of basically those little one pound uh, canisters that you can get for, for camping or, or, or whatever. But you, you can get an attachment where you can put it on a 20 pound bottle if you want to. Uh, today we will be testing out one of those small bottles and see how long it lasts. I think these things retail for about $130. I did not pay that. You know, I like to try to find a good deal. So last year I got my big Blackstone on clearance at Walmart. And let me show you how I did that. Even with, even with this, I got a good deal on it. So there's a website called BrickSeek.com. It basically is an inventory tracker between Walmart, Target, Lowe's, Home Depot, stores like that. You can uh, look up products and see around stores what they have and what their prices are. You know, this time stuff starts clearancing out and this is a really good time to get it. So if you just go to BrickSeek.com and then up towards the end, you see the inventory tracker, you click on Walmart. And then you have to know the SKU number to, to basically search for it. So there is a SKU search function, and I just type in Blackstone. Then I put in my zip code, and we search for it, and it's gonna pull up all the Walmarts around me showing their inventory and how much they're going for. So I picked this one up for $74. So I think I got a pretty good deal. It's gonna be my main camping, or uh, cooking for uh, camping, so it's gonna be going in my trailer. Won't be doing too many videos with it probably, just uh, to just show you guys how it comes and how long one of those bottles lasts so you can make an informed decision whether you would like to get one or not. You know, it is their smallest version, but I think it has enough room. Basically the griddle's 268 inches of uh, cooking surface and it runs at 12,000 BTU. So I think for camping, it's gonna be perfect. Even just for small meals at your house, if you wanted to use it for, or another big one would be tailgating, you know, upcoming football season. I think it would work out perfect for that. I don't think there's going to be very much assembly to it, but let me go ahead and let's open it up and get it out of this box so we can see how it comes. So I decided to take it off the table so you can actually see. So I got it open. We got our manual. Looks like the, the feet for the bottom. That looks like all we can take out right now. Let's go ahead and lift it out. And nothing else in the box. Here's the gas regulator. All right, then not much else going on here. Just get it out of the styrofoam. Move that up here. And just like any other Blackstone, 
Its cooktop is pretty heavy. Get that out of the plastic. Appears to be made of the same stuff as the normal Blackstones. Got your grease drain right here. Here's the unit itself. I do like the, the stainless steel of this one. Little grease trap. We're gonna take it out, put it back in. Should make cleanup pretty easy. All right, let's look at these instructions. All right, so going through these instructions, there's really not much to it. So step one, it says remove the four adjustable height, feet, and regulator body from the packaging, and then take the griddle top off the griddle body. And then step two, step two, we're going to place the griddle upside down on a soft surface and attach the four adjustable height legs to the bottom of the griddle. And it's basically saying uh, while your griddle is upside down, ensure that the fuel nozzle is housed within the burner tube opening. And then all we do is uh, turn the griddle back over so it stands on the legs and then place the griddle top on the griddle body. And then we're going to basically put in the uh, LP bottle into the regulator and then hook it up and then turn it on. So not that much to it. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so only the really assembly is right here. Just put it in the feet. All right, everything for the gas lines looks right. Let's put it back over. It's got little, so this has little feet on the bottom here, it goes basically in these grooves. All right, next thing to do is just uh, hook up the regulator to a bottle. And then this hooks in over to the side over here. Basically has a little collar and just screws in. And that's it, we're ready to go. I'm actually gonna take this inside and I'm actually gonna wash it down a little bit, try to get some of this, uh, the oil that comes with these things off a little bit and then we will start our seasoning process and see how long one of these bottles lasts. So stay tuned. All right, it's time for us to talk about seasoning. I'm gonna do a little bit different than what Blackstone recommends, but not, not too much. But you know, the basic idea behind um, your initial seasoning is to coat your griddle with oil. And heat the oil above its smoke point to polymerize the oil to create a bond with the griddle top. You'll end up with a black stick resistant surface that's easy to clean and as long as you keep it going, you know, oil it every time you cook with it, you'll always have this non-stick surface. So what Blackstone recommends is basically put it on a medium heat, put a light coat of oil on there, let it start smoking. Once the smoke goes away, you let it cool down a bit and then do it over. You know, around two or three times is probably enough. I know people go a little bit overboard because they want that super black finish right away, but that comes with time and cooking. So that's where we're not gonna go too overboard with it. But today, I want to test this bottle out just to see how long one of these little bottles last. You know, one of these bottles is about three bucks a piece. So it's a good idea to figure out how long those things last so you can make an informed decision on this thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this thing on full blast. We're going as high as we'll go, and I'm just going to start a timer, and I'll be seasoning during this whole thing. Basically, I'll let the, the same thing, light coat of oil. When it smokes, uh, smokes and then stops, then we'll do another coat. Um, but I want this bottle to basically burn out for you, and let's see how long it lasts. Just to, just to, you know, get a little bit of information. 
So the way I'm gonna season mine today, I just have some canola oil and just an old rag. Use a rag as opposed to a paper towel. Paper towels will start getting uh, particles all over the surface and you, you don't want that. So just a, an old rag works a lot better. All right, so first thing, let's get this thing lit and I will start a timer here on my phone and then we'll see how long this bottle lasts. So to light it, basically push in and you can hear the gas going. And it's got its own lighter and it's lit now. So let's go ahead and start our timer. So the timer's going, let's see if you can see that. I'm not sure if you can. Oh wait. There's our timer. And once we burn it completely out, basically once the flame stops, we'll uh, take a look at that time and see where we're at. All right, let's get our first coat of oil on there. So it's gonna be burning off, you know, the factory oils too. I did wash it, I didn't go crazy with it. And it's, you know, super scrubbing and mud, but just a little bit of soap and water just to get some of the stuff off. Just a light coat. You should be able to see everywhere that it goes. And you want to get the entire surface, not just the cooking surface, but you want to get all around the edges, even on the outside. I'll do a real light one here on the first one so that it will continue to burn off the factory oils. And then we'll set another one in here in a minute. So I don't know if you can tell here with the camera, but the, the oil is starting to smoke. It's only been about five minutes and it's already starting to smoke. So this sucker's already getting super hot and you can see it's starting to discolor in here. You want that. You want this whole thing to start discoloring and that's where we'll start getting our black from is building this uh, layer of oil on top of the, the griddle top itself. So as soon as this stops smoking, I'll put another layer of oil on it. All right, it's about stopped smoking now. So let's go ahead and put one more coat of oil. And it's pretty hot now, so it doesn't take it long to start smoking now. So it's about done smoking again, so we'll go for our third time. And this will be the last one I show you until we're done with this bottle. Um, because I'm not sure how long it's gonna, how long this bottle is gonna take. So I don't want to make this video too long of me just sitting here putting oil on the, on the griddle. So I'd recommend, like for your first one, I, I would probably recommend to to follow Blackstone's instructions. You know, if you can let it cool down, then heat it back up. You can go ahead and do that. It's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. As far as. Uh, I don't think mine's gonna be messed up here. Just keep continue doing it, because I mean, that's how I did my other one and it's just fine. But I'm gonna continue doing this until the bottle is burned out. So I should have a pretty good layer of stuff on mine. And I will bring you back when the bottle runs out and we'll check out that time. Then we'll do a burn test on it, or a, basically a cook, cook on it. I'm gonna cook a hamburger for you guys. We'll see what kind of uh, sear it puts on. All right, guys, the, that actually took a lot longer than I thought it was. I figured one of those little cans would only last around 30 minutes or so, um, based on how how much the, the big my big unit burns. Um, but I've been sitting here waiting on it. I've been sitting here looking at the fire almost the entire time so I could catch it as soon as it goes out and it just went out. So let me show you the timer. So an hour and 46 minutes this thing burned on complete high as it would go. You know at the end when it starts running out of gas it's not going to be as high of a flame but I went until the flame actually died out completely. So an hour and 46 minutes. I thought I was going to have to hook up to my trailer and not use these little ones but these little ones might work for me. All right so that's our burn test. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cook a little bit on it. So I got quite a few layers of oil on it as it was for an hour and 46 minutes. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this bottle out and we're gonna cook us a hamburger just so we can see what kind of sear, see how it compares to the big one. I'll start with some bacon though, so stay tuned. So bacon's another really good thing to season up with. I'm just making a single burger here, so just about three pieces of bacon is all I'm gonna do. All right guys, for our burger test today, I have um, basically a third pound of fresh ground chuck patty. All right, once you start seeing juices coming out the top of the burger, see some of these juices coming over here? That's when you know it's time to flip. So let's check and see what kind of sear we got. Excellent. Now this is the perfect opportunity. If you're gonna have cheese, let's go ahead and put the cheese on. And then basically once that cheese melts, your burger's done. I'm gonna go ahead and start toasting a couple of buns right now. I'm just using some, some potato buns. All right, while our cheese is finishing melting, let me show you how we're gonna go ahead and build this burger. So I toasted the bun. I'm gonna put a little bit of mustard on the bottom, a little bit of onions, on the bottom, some shredded lettuce all on the bottom. All right, our cheese is pretty much melted. So what I'm gonna do, make this a little bit easier. I'm gonna take this bun that we just finished. Put it right on there. And we're gonna add a little bit of ketchup to the top. Top it with some bacon. And then our final bun. And there is our test burger. I'll tell you what, I love cooking burgers on the Blackstone. All right guys, so I'm pretty impressed with this thing. Um, it's efficiency with a gas is what got me. I didn't know it was gonna last that long, so hour and 46 minutes did really good. And then let's go ahead and take a look at this burger. See if you can see it. So it has almost the same type of sear as the, its bigger brother. So let me go ahead and Puts off the same exact food. Super happy with it. It'll be, it's gonna work perfect for me camping and even tailgating if we go to any football games or anything like that. Works super good. All right guys, I hope this was informational for you. So if you're looking at buying one, hope it gives you some information about how this thing runs and what it does. Hey, if you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. Hit that like button for me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and always holler back.